Let's fix up the lighting, make it more brightening. Hello, my snacks. Welcome back. My name is Jack, the snack that smiles back. Yeah! Y'all seem to love them, so today we're dipping our feet once again into a bit of Schadenfraud. Is that how you pronounce it? The joy in seeing others suffer, essentially. Now, our first story pitches the topic on uh, appropriate discipline. Have you heard of mucking? I haven't. And second question, would you say it's an appropriate form of punishment for a crime? Let's begin. Today I fricked up and will be mucked as punishment. This is really embarrassing, but just happened. I know I won't come across in a good light here, but if nothing else, I wanted to post this as a warning to others who think they can keep getting away with bad things forever. I was dumb and stole from a store a few weeks back thinking I'd get away with it. I know it's a really bad habit, but I had some friends who showed me how easy it is to do when I was 16 or 17, so I've done it several times since. I only got caught once at 17, and basically just got a slap on the wrist, so I guess I learned that I wasn't risking very much by doing it. Well, the next day, two officers showed up at my door and said they had footage of my theft. I'd been caught again. So, they took me down to the station to explain things to me. <laughs> I would figured they'd just give me a fine and curfew again. Wrong. I get there, and they said that based on my history, I would be potentially facing sleep jail time and a permanent record, but gave me the choice to be mucked instead. That's a semi-official punishment still used in some places in my country, and several other parts of Eastern Europe from what I've been told. It's just a one-day punishment, but basically, you're taken to a cow shed, sat down and immobilized in a corner, and then several shovelfuls of cow manure are shoveled onto you. You're left there to suffer, and they come back to release you at sundown. It's not codified in law, and I have the option to decline it, but it doesn't seem like much of a choice. If the alternative is potentially a year in jail and more, they said if I submit to be mucked, the formal charges will be dropped. It's a way for local police departments to quickly and cheaply deal with cases. And they said the only reason they're offering it to me is that they're confident this will stop me from further reoffending. So I reluctantly agreed. Just signed the paperwork today that I agree to receive a six hour mucking as my punishment. The officer signed it, and the store owner signed that he was satisfied with it too. I'm really dreading this, and have no idea what to expect since I've lived in the city my whole life but I know I have no one but myself to blame. Now, of course, this wouldn't be a good story if we just left it there, so here's the update. I've had a couple days to reflect and recover now and wanted to put this out there. Crime really doesn't pay. So before the punishment, the worst part was telling my parents. I'm 20 and still live with them, and given what I'd heard about people stinking to high hell after the punishment, I figured I had no choice but to tell them. They were surprisingly calm about it, basically saying, well, I guess we couldn't teach you properly not to steal, so we'll see if the cows can. Don't expect much sympathy from us. Look, I'd rather have them yelled though, honestly. I'd like to say I was able to make use of some of your suggestions, something nice smelling under the nose, a shower cap, etc., but this was not the case. First, the agreement to be mucked I signed forbid any effort to mitigate the punishment's effects. It gave examples like menthol under the nose, or even getting a very short haircut right beforehand. Secondly, I had to report to the jail the night beforehand, so they could make sure everyone set to be mucked the next day was accounted for. My mum was kind enough to drive me there. So, I spent the night in a small jail cell alone, knowing I'd be driven out to the farm the next morning. It was good perspective on what could await me if I get caught again. I don't think I could spend months on end in a small box like that. As horrible as mucking was, I think I made the right choice to avoid jail. The morning of the mucking. Morning came, and they took me out in handcuffs and loaded me into the back seat of a police car. There were six of us to be mucked that day, it appeared. Two cars, three people in the back of each. They reminded us to not talk to one another or to the officers. It was a silent 30 minute drive way out into the countryside. Very nerve wracking. Then I saw the farm in the distance and it was way bigger than I thought. 
I guess I envisioned a little roadside barn with 20 to 30 cows in it, but this dairy was massive. Now, I just gotta wonder, is the dairy industry in your area in on this? Are they paying these officers to come and use their manure to <laughs> as a way of using punishing crime? I think we can all agree, though, that uh, your parents merely showing a sign of disappointment and silent disgust is so much worse than them actually verbally yelling at you. Anyway, back to the human chocolate fondue. We pulled up around the back of one of these giant cow sheds and they unloaded us. Apparently, four of us had a six hour sentence, including me, while two people had a four hour sentence. The officers led the four of us into the back entrance of the cow shed and took the other two off to wait in some room off to the side for a couple hours. The stench hit me when we entered the barn. It was nice to be out from the cold and into the heated shed, God, those cows reek. It was noisy, too. A constant mooing from what sounded like hundreds of animals. They took us to a somewhat secluded area in the back of the barn. We had to remove our shirts, socks, and shoes, but could keep our pants on. They also gave us goggles to wear. Then they re-handcuffed us and made us sit down with our backs to the wall one by one, about five meters apart, very spaced out. When they got to me... They clipped my handcuffs into a thing on the wall behind my back, cuffed my legs together at the ankles, and locked it into a spot on the floor, and also put some sort of restraint around my midsection. I really couldn't move, beyond being able to slightly swivel my head. Again, please do uh, ponder to yourself that this is uh, whether or not this is a justified crime or rather medieval punishment. The mucking. Finally, they left us with us locked in place, and returned in a couple minutes with shovels and a couple large wheelbarrows. One officer started mucking the man on my left, and the other started on me. It was pretty unceremonious. I mean, he took a huge shovel full of the manure and dumped it right on my legs and lap. The next shovel full over my chest. Another on my lower half, another on my upper half. I was retching. I'd never smelled anything like this before. And it was all greenish brown, and I couldn't even tell if it was a solid or a liquid. It was also very hot and thick and runny. The next couple shovelfuls went over my head and into my face. I couldn't see because they splattered my goggles. When they finished doing that to all four of us, which didn't take long, it sounded like they left the barn and I was left to sit there in misery. And it was complete misery. Whatever I expected, this was way, way worse. First of all, no one warned me that this stuff doesn't smell anything like dog poop or even a stronger version of dog poop. To me, it sort of smelled like awful, rancid farts, and it felt like there was practically steam coming off of it. It didn't make it painful to breathe or feel suffocating like ammonia, but it made breathing incredibly nauseating and unpleasant. Every breath felt like inhaling these hot, wet farts, and the air felt so thick with it I could taste it too. It made me very conscious of my breathing pattern, which makes time slow down so much. Then there was the actual physical presence of the stuff on me. It's hot, it's wet, it's slimy and dripping and running everywhere. The load dumped on top of my head was constantly dripping and running down into my face. And the stuff on my face was dripping and running down my body, and I couldn't move, so I couldn't do anything to stop it. It's itchy and irritating, and just a horribly disgusting feeling. And then there's the environment around me. I can't see well, if at all, from the manure splattered goggles. And all you hear is the constant mooing of cows, and the gagging, retching, groaning from the other offenders around you. Can't see, can't move, can't talk, nothing to do but inhale the stench and think about what I've done. Which, I guess, was the point. I couldn't hold back the vomit for long myself. Then, after some time, it starts to dry on you a little bit, and form kind of a crust. This was no less gross, especially as I heard and felt flies and insects start to swarm around me, with no way to swat them away. So, <laughs> I feel bad for him, but I feel even worse about the fact that I kind of see how this is a very... <laughs> 
effective punishment. I'm just trying to think of like, what are the possible biohazards to this? Like what sort of uh, methods? I mean, could you verify this as being actual torture? I mean, bugs crawling all over you and you can't do anything but just feel their little creeping presence. I don't know, man. I'd, I'd be shouting in anger. After what felt like forever, I heard the officers return with the other two offenders with the four hour sentences. And I guess the side of us must have been horrible to behold. Because one of them, I'm guessing it was the woman in her 30s with the tattoos in the car next to me, was saying, Oh my god, no way, I'm sorry, please don't do that to me, etc. Obviously, didn't do her any good. I was just shocked it had only been two hours. I didn't think I could make it another four. After those two were mucked, I was surprised to have an officer suddenly dry off my goggles with a wash rag so I could see and ask me if I wanted a drink. I guess they didn't want us to dehydrate from puking. So I let him put a water bottle to my lips and took a couple sips, which felt good. Unfortunately, they then gave me another couple shovelfuls from the wheelbarrow, starting the whole oozing and drying process all over again. This happened once more later on, offering a drink to all six of us, followed by another couple shovelfuls, at what I can only assume was the four hour mark. Finally, at the end, they hosed all of us down with cold water for a good two minutes each, which was miserable in itself, loaded us back into the cars and took us back into the city. My mother was, reluctantly, there to pick me up. So needless to say, I was exhausted afterwards. My mom had to roll the windows down and looked disgusted the whole ride home but she said she was glad I was safe. I spent the next couple days just laying in bed and showering repeatedly. I've tried almost every suggestion you all gave me in the last post, and a lot more, but nothing seems to fully get the smell out. I thought I'd be used to it by now, but even I can still smell it sometimes. Thankfully, I think it's getting a little bit better. It certainly wasn't worth it, and if getting caught again means substantial jail time and or an even longer mucking, I wouldn't risk it even if it's only a 1% chance. I promised myself and my parents I wouldn't steal again. I hope I can keep that promise, and I guess thinking of that awful smell and the feel of manure if I ever start feeling impulsive will hopefully be enough to keep me straight. So yeah, that's the story. Uh, again, let me know in your thoughts down below. Like, it worked! <laughs> They learnt their lesson! And I don't know if you'd really consider this enough to be one that is, you know, traumatized. But who are we to, you know, make that statement about someone? Oh, you're not traumatized. You just have an experience that every time you do something or have a vibe of something, you get triggered about this memory that causes you to really freak out about possibly doing it. Nah, that's... You're fine. I just begin to feel sorry for those in the olden days where access to clean water and showering and, you know, soap of all possible varieties was not as available. Now, some people were skeptical of this being a legitimate uh, crime and punishment, but there's this interesting comment that I'm going to highlight here. I don't know anything about European law, nor am I a lawyer, but I do know that it is not completely unheard of in the US for judges to have some degree of creative leeway with sentencing for minor crimes. For example, there's a particular judge that had given people the option of weird stuff like this instead of jail time. For example, a woman stiffed a cab driver for the fare from a 30 mile trip, so she was given the option of going to jail or walking the 30 miles that she stole from the cab driver. Another person could choose to spend eight hours in a dump picking up trash or go to jail for animal abuse. Certainly, neither of these punishments would be in any official record as a punishment for a particular crime, and conventional punishments were always offered. Oh, and their link is just a random small image of a little judge. That, it's a little judge with... <laughs> What was that fist up there like that for? Why does it look so disproportionate to the body? I was giving him the finger, but they photoshopped it out. Yeah, it's interesting because, I mean, they signed something that I guess wavered them being able to outcry this as being a horrible punishment forced upon them because they were offered it. It was like, hey, there's this option or you go to jail. But then there's a the whole case of like, okay, well, either I go to jail or I do this horrible experience. I mean, are they one and the same? Either you go to court or we get to stab you three times. I mean, is it the same? <laughs> is it a fair thing to have to choose between? Now this next story I've chosen purely to teach you about the idea that when someone says to you, yeah, go on, try it, I dare ya, trust me, it'll never happen. That thing I'm telling you won't happen, won't happen. Just take their word for it. Don't challenge it, don't even attempt to 
dare. Otherwise, the following will happen. Today I freaked up by making a kid fall off their horse. About to be homeless from my own stupidity. Title says it all. I'm a 21 year old, the ex-teenager and total dumbass have been living as a tenant on a horse farm with a woman in their 50s. A neighbor's kid, who's 14, boards their family's horse here. We hang out weekly since we're often both doing chores or activities in the barn at the same time, and it's mutually beneficial for us to trail ride together. To the point where we've become closer in a way I now recognize as inappropriate. Uh, not like that. I mean like two sisters teasing each other constantly. And if you looked at us, you'd think we were two to three years apart, not seven, because I have a baby face. Ooh, goo -goo -ca -ca. Her horse is known for being a bomb-proof, and she notoriously has a seat like glue. She encourages people to try scaring him occasionally to test his desensitization, and at most, he flinches in place. These exercises have always been very light-hearted. Cue me taking it a hundred steps too far today in a lapse of total judgment and reason by saying BOO and jumping a foot in their direction with a tarp I happen to be carrying back to the barn and that he has never reacted to before when she was on his back and unaware. AKA didn't prompt me to engage him like usual. I'm certain if I had asked, do you want me to see if this will spook him? She would have enthusiastically said yes. And what transpired still would have been 99.9% .9 my fault because I'm the freaking adult who should have known better. Anyway, you can guess where this is going. He freaked out like never before and she got dumped on her butt. She's uninjured, thankfully, but now her parents are livid at me and my landlord is kicking me out for jeopardizing her farm. The parents have essentially threatened to leave if I'm not taken care of, and their whole social circle, which I'm surrounded by, is essentially looking down on me pitifully. I have nowhere to go coming from a very toxic family background, so it'll be my first official time being homeless. I'm a pretty quiet, unassuming person, and this is my first time having a major conflict with and being downright hated by anyone outside of my family as an independent adult, which makes it even more stressful. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's what you deserve for literally endangering a kid's life, what the frick? And, look, you're probably right. This might have been accidental, but it's still not a closeted, relatable, feel-good story like I imagine lots of posts here are. I seriously freaked up. After it initially happened, I was actually nervously laughing quite a bit, and my explanation for that was, well, when Sting finds out, they're going to tear me a new a-hole. Because I already knew that was the truth of it. I feel bad even telling my family what happened, since it was so downright stupid, and I know they'll be ashamed of me. I've slept on the side of the road before, but never while completely AWOL. Even as I type this, my mind is kind of bouncing back and forth between God, what an insanely reckless thing for me to do for which I fully deserve serious consequences for and what a hilariously petty thing to have completely upended my life over. I guess at this point, I'm trying to think of this as some disturbed blessing in disguise. And in a sense, it's been coming for a while, as in since last week when I was working on desensitizing one of my landlord's horses to a flag and inadvertently prompted them to shut down. AKA zone out in appeasement rather than truly relax. It, it can be easy to confuse the two. And my landlord proceeded to storm over, lay into me for five minutes while I stood there meekly trying to explain how it wasn't intentional. I'm still a beginner learning the ropes and made a mistake. Then proceeded to shove me to show you how the horse feels. She's never blown up like that before, and we've never been the same since. And I'm not going to lie, it's really unnerved me to realize that everyone I've become friends with over these last few months here, who I'd think to confide in about that incident, aren't really my friends at all. They're her friends, first and foremost. They've just tolerated me to be polite. To the point where if they went out of their way to ask me what happened, and I was just plain honest about her getting physical, it would backfire on me miserably. Even though it's the truth. All of which has made getting yelled at today harder. Because on one hand, I deserved it. But on the other hand, I can tell it's made my landlord feel further justified in disrespecting and dehumanizing me as a person, and I feel like I've degraded myself for letting her. 
anyway, kind of gone off on unrelated spiel. Thanks for listening, if you made it this far. I'm sorry for the deluge of grammar mistakes. I'm usually really coherent, so this is new for me. <laughs> Generally, you hope you're having a better day than mine. So here's the thing. Okay, uh, on your side of the fence, you want to say she's an idiot, but also... In my experience, as someone who grew up around horses, I mean, my sister even still owns our family horses. <laughs> it's, look, okay, this person literally has a horse as their profile picture. I think we'll just trust what they're saying too. On one hand, what you did was weapons grade dumb. On the other hand, I once had a horse spook because a butterfly landed on his nose. My friend got dumped because hers noticed his reflection in the mirror at the end of the arena. The one he's walked and trotted past thousands of times. But this time, oh, scary mirror horse was going to get him for sure. Also, I think they'd have kicked you out at some point, even if the incident with the 14 year old didn't happen. As someone who is a horse people, some horse people are weird and sometimes more irrational and unpredictable than the animals themselves. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that right there. It's a great moment from that story to, to really reflect on, I guess, in your own relationships too. They're her friends first and foremost. They've just tolerated me to be polite. God, I can only imagine the amount of friendships out there that are just based on that. Like if you're both friends of someone's relationship, you know, you're friends with the girlfriend and the boyfriend, and they break up and you pick a side, then you never were friends with the other person. You were just tolerating them to be polite. Like, can you say you really deserved any sort of politeness and respect from them if you, you know, subconsciously weren't really reciprocating it? Either way, I wish these people had the conscience to understand that, you know, this was clearly egging each other on. And yeah, look, yeah, you went too far, I guess. But I mean, your friend was the one boasting the challenge. I just feel like you shouldn't be the only one to be blamed for this. But now let's dive into something a bit more lighthearted or traumatizing, depending on if you have this experience with your own parents. Meet Breakfast Crumbs. I'm, I'm hoping they're fine with me sharing the name here for the sake of this uh, intro. Crummy morning snack here is going to teach you why maybe you shouldn't share everything with your parents. To, you know, I'm all for having an open dialogue with family, but this is maybe why you shouldn't. Today I freaked out by finding my mom's profile in a kink group. Backstory. I have been in the kink bittersome community for about six years. Last year I moved back to my hometown and joined an online location specific group with my partner to try and get involved in the local community. My proclivities were outed to my family by an ex-dom a few years ago, so they all know, but we never really talked about anything past the are you safe at home level conversation. I stupidly got a tattoo for him, daddy, on my ribs. This is detail and it is important. It's also helpful to note that my mom is more of the I'm a cool mom variety than a traditional parent. Lots of oversharing and loose boundaries for what is appropriate. This past summer, I helped set my mom up with a Tinder account for the lols. She had recently gone through a breakup and was looking for some fast attention to help waste time during recovery from surgery. A few days later, while she was swiping through, she mentioned she noticed a lot of men in the area looking for a no-strings, ethical non-monogamous dom-sub situation, and she, disgusted, said, why is everyone only looking for hookups? It's so gross. Why are all of these guys into kinky stuff and nothing normal and vanilla? She furiously added to her bio, Every delicious dessert begins with a vanilla base. In an effort to educate, I mentioned the possibility that there's a lot more people involved in alternative relationships and lifestyles than she might be aware of and maybe to consider having an open mind rather than immediately smack talking. This was my first mistake. Fast forward a few months, she starts seeing this guy. He recently moved here to be closer to family. Seems interesting and attentive to her. The siblings and I meet him and everything seems great. Super happy for her. Now today, my mom needed a ride home, which took about 40 minutes because the roads are bad, snowstorms and such. I am an anxious driver, so in an effort to keep the conversation lighthearted, I asked how things were going with the new guy. She stream of consciousness gave me the rundown, ending in that she had recently done some research and realized that kinky and dom-sub relationships really aren't that different than normal relationships, just with a lot more conversation around consent, boundaries, limits, some additional props, and a negotiated power exchange. 
I was skeptical, but I took the bait. Validating her thoughts with, Yeah, it's part of the reason I like that aspect of my relationships. Nothing left to chance. We went inside her house and she mentioned she had joined an online group to try to learn more and explore that realm, and told me more about some of the virtual classes she had joined in on. This was the point where I should have changed the subject and chosen to go on in blissful ignorance. The things she was describing sounded too familiar to the group I was in, and I couldn't just let it be. When I arrived home, I remembered a handful of new members had recently been invited into the closed group and scanned the new member list. And then I saw it. The name she uses for everything. Her memoji as her profile picture, and an introduction to the group describing herself as a lady in the streets. Self-identifying as a, redacted, no safe for work photo included. And the next thing I saw was her boyfriend describing his interests, including Daddy Dom, with his accompanying pictures. I was on the phone with my partner when I discovered all of these things. Misery loves company, I guess. He, too, was mortified to learn we shared that internet safe space with my mom and her partner. I immediately texted my siblings and friends to say goodbye and that I would be walking into the nearest lake. No further explanation, and that I love them all. I'm not exactly sure how to move forward in my life, now tarnished with this information, but I am certainly considering a large rib tattoo cover-up and plucking my eyes out of my head and washing them in ice water. Ah! The ball gag doesn't fall far from the tree. We are just a slave to our genetics, it seems. Oh, the ties that bind. Oh, you mean the ties that blind? Oh, and gag. Oh, there's a real bond there. Tighter than a leather glove on a hand. That's what OJ said. Ah, uh, no, no, stop it. First of all, good on your mum for finding a space that you got to explore this aspect of your life. Shame it took you until, you know, well, your, your 40s? Doesn't really say. Uh, yeah, shame it took a while for you to experience it, but hey, at least you're catching up. I'd shame the lady here for, you know, kind of being disgusted by her mum about all this, but I mean, wouldn't we all if we caught our parents in this kind of environment? We don't want to see that. I don't know, unless you're maybe you're the guy from yesterday who was into incestuous thoughts about his family. Unless you're that guy, you'd be disgusted. <laughs> but hey, she got punished either way. She now has to know this is a thing that her mom gets up to. Literally any sort of kinky stuff she gets up to, she'll now remember. She'll never forget that her mom is likely doing that too. Okay, my saucy scallywags, that ends today's video. Thank you as always for watching. Any support you bring to the channel is much appreciated. It's finally gaining a bit of momentum, but uh, if you're new to the channel yourself, please subscribe. Help me out with the algorithm by liking yada yada. You know all that stupid basic bleh. Anyway though, have a good one. As always, if you have any stories yourself that you find that you'd love for us to check out on the channel, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, have a good one. Hopefully you've been reminded that your life's failings aren't that bad of failings. And um, see you later. Bye.